The years of lead, Italian, anni di Piombo, is a term used for a period of social and political turmoil in Italy that lasted from the late 1960s until the early 1980s, marked by a wave of both left-wing and right-wing incidents of political terrorism. The years of lead are often considered to have begun with the hot autumn strikes starting in 1969, the death of the policeman Antonio Anaruma who was killed in a leftist demonstration in November 1969, the Piazza Fontana bombing in December of that year, which killed 17 and was likely perpetrated by right-wing terrorists in Milan, and the subsequent death of Giuseppe Pinelli while in police custody. The term's origin possibly came as a reference to the number of shootings during the period, or a popular 1981 German film Marianne and Julianne, released in Italy as Annie di Piombo, which centered on the lives of two members of the West German militant far-left group Red Army Faction which had gained notoriety during the same period. The hot autumn and widespread unrest of 1960s and 1970s There was widespread social conflict and unprecedented acts of terrorism carried out by both right and left-wing paramilitary groups. An attempt to endorse the neo-fascist Italian social movement MSI by the Tambroni cabinet led to rioting and was short-lived. Widespread labor unrest and the collaboration of countercultural student activist groups with working class factory workers and pro labor radical leftist organizations such as Pater Opereo and Lotta Continua culminated in the so-called Hot Autumn of 1969, a massive series of strikes in factories and industrial centers in northern Italy. Student strikes and labor strikes, often led by workers, leftists, left sympathizing laborers, or Marxist activists, became increasingly common, often deteriorating into clashes between the police and demonstrators composed largely of workers, students, activists, and often left-wing militants. The Christian Democrats DC, were instrumental in the Italian Socialist Party PSI, gaining power in the 1960s and they created a coalition. The assassination of the Christian Democrat leader Aldo Moro in 1978 ended the strategy of historic compromise between the DC and the Italian Communist Party PCI. The assassination was carried out by the Red Brigades, then led by Mario Moretti. Between 1968 and 1988, 428 murders were attributed to political violence in the form of bombings, assassinations, and street warfare between rival militant factions. Chronology 1969 Public protests Public protests shook Italy during 1969, with the autonomous student movement being particularly active, leading to the occupation of the Fiat Automobile Factory in Milan. Death of Antonio Anaruma On 19 November 1969, Antonio Anaruma, a Milanese policeman, was killed during a riot by far-left demonstrators. He was the first civil servant to die in the wave of violence. Piazza Fontana bombing The monument to Victor Emmanuel II, the Banca Nazionale del Lavoro in Rome and the Banca Commerciale Italiana and the Banca Nazionale dell'Agricoltura in Milan were bombed in December. Local police arrested 80 or so suspects from left-wing groups, including Giuseppe Pinelli, an anarchist initially blamed for the bombing, and Pietro Valpreda. Their guilt was denied by left-wing members, especially by members of the student movement, then prominent in Milan's universities, as they believed that the bombing was carried out by fascists. Following the death of Giuseppe Pinelli, who mysteriously died on 15 December while in police custody, the radical left-wing newspaper Lotta Continua started a campaign accusing police officer Luigi Calabrese of Pinelli. S. Murder. In 1975, Calabrese and other police officials were acquitted by Judge Gerardo D. Ambrosio, who decided that Pinelli's fall from a window had been caused by his being taken ill and losing his balance. Meanwhile, the anarchist Valpreda and five others were convicted and jailed for the bombing. They were later released after three years of preventive detention. Then, two neo-fascists, Franco Frida, resident in Padua, and Giovanni Ventura, were arrested accused of being the organizers of the massacre. In 1987 they were acquitted by the Supreme Court for lack of evidence. In the 1990s, new investigations into the Piazza Fontana bombing, citing new witnesses' testimony, implicated Frida and Ventura again. 
However, the pair cannot be put on trial again because of double jeopardy, as they were acquitted of the crime in 1987. The Red Brigades, the most prominent far-left terrorist organization, conducted a secret internal investigation that paralleled the official inquiry. They ordered that the inquiry remain secret, because of the unfavorable light that it could shed on other terrorist organizations. The inquiry was discovered after a shootout between the Red Brigade and the Carabinieri at Rabiano di Medilia in October 1974. The cover-up was exposed in 2000 by Giovanni Pellegrino, at the time president of the Commission Straghi, Parliamentary Committee on Massacres. 1970 Birth of the Red Brigades the Red Brigades were founded in August 1970 by Renato Curcio and Margarita Mara Cagle, who had met as students at the University of Trento and later married, and Alberto Franceschini. While the Trento group around Curcio had its main roots in the sociology department of the Catholic University, the Reggio Emilia group around Franceschini mostly included former members of the FGCI, the Communist Youth Movement, expelled from the parent party for their extremist views. Another group of militants came from the Sit Siemens factories in Milan. These were Mario Moretti, a union official, Corrado Aluni, who would leave the Red Brigades to found another organization, Fighter, and Alfredo Bonavita, a blue-collar worker. The first action of the the RB was burning the car of Giuseppe Leone, a leader of Sit Siemens Company in Milan, on 17 September 1970, in the context of the labor unrest within the factory. The Golpe Borghese In December, a neo-fascist coup, dubbed the Golpe Borghese, was planned by young far-right fanatics, elderly veterans of Italian Social Republic, and supported by members of the Corpo Forestale dello Stato, along with right-aligned entrepreneurs and industrialists. The Black Prince, Junio Valerio Borghese, took part in it. The coup, called off at the last moment, was discovered by the newspaper Pisa Sera, and publicly exposed three months later. 1971 Assassination of Alessandro Flores On March 26, Alessandro Flores was assassinated in Genoa by a unit of the October 22 Group, a far-left terrorist organization. An amateur photographer had taken a photo of the killer that enabled police to identify the terrorists. The group was investigated, and more members arrested. Some fled to Milan and joined the Gruppi di Azioni Partigiana, GAP, and, later, the Red Brigades. The Red Brigades considered Gruppo 22 Ottober its predecessor and, in April 1974, they kidnapped Judge Mario Sosi in a failed attempt at freeing the jailed members. Years later, the Red Brigades killed Judge Francesco Coco on June 8, 1976, along with his two police escorts, Giovanni Sapinara and Antiaco Diana, in revenge. 1972 Assassination of Luigi Calabresi On 17 May 1972, police officer Luigi Calabresi, a recipient of the Gold Medal of the Italian Republic for Civil Valor, was killed in Milan. Authorities initially focused on suspects in Lotta Continua, then it was assumed that the Calabrese had been killed by neo-fascist organizations, bringing about the arrest of two neo-fascist activists, Johnny Nardi and Bruno Stefano, along with German Gudrun Kies, in 1974. They were ultimately released. Sixteen years later, Adriano Safri, Giorgio Petro Stefani, Ovidio Bompressi, and Leonardo Marino were arrested in Milan following Marino's confession to the murder. Their trial finally established their guilt in organizing and carrying out the assassination. Calabrese's assassination opened the chapter of assassinations carried out by armed groups of the far left. Pediano bombing On 31 May 1972, three Italian carabinieri were killed in Pediano in a bombing, attributed to Lotta Continua. Officers of the Carabinieri were later indicted and convicted for perverting the course of justice. Judge Casson identified Orden Nuovo member Vincenzo Vinciguerra as the man who had planted the Pediano bomb. The neo-fascist terrorist Vinciguerra, arrested in the 1980s for the bombing in Pediano, declared to magistrate Felice Casson that this false flag attack had been intended to force the Italian state to declare a state of emergency and to become more authoritarian. 
Vinci Guerra explained how the SISMI military intelligence agency had protected him, allowing him to escape to Francoist Spain. Kassin's investigation revealed that the right-wing organization Orden Nuovo had collaborated with the Italian Military Secret Service, CID, Servizio Informazione Defesa. Together, they had engineered the Pediano attack and then blamed the Red Brigades. He confessed and testified that he had been covered by a network of sympathizers in Italy and abroad who had ensured that he could escape after the attack. A whole mechanism came into action, Vinci Guerra recalled, that is, the Carabinieri, the Minister of the Interior, the Customs Services and the Military and Civilian Intelligence Services accepted the ideological reasoning behind the attack. 1973 The Primaval Fire a 16 April 1973 attack by members of Pater Opereo on the house of neo-fascist Italian social movement MSI militant Mario Mattei resulted in his two sons, aged 8 and 20, being burned alive. Milan Police Command Bombing during a 17 May 1973 ceremony honoring Luigi Calabresi, in which the interior minister was present, Gianfranco Bertoli, an anarchist, threw a bomb that killed four and injured 45. In 1975, Bertoli was sentenced to life imprisonment. The Milan court wrote that he was embroiled in connections with the far right, that was a sit informant and a confidant of the police. In the 1990s, it was suspected that Bertoli was a member of Gladio, but he denied it in an interview. In the list of 622 Gladio members made public in 1990, his name is missing. A magistrate investigating the assassination attempt of Mariano Rumor found that Bertoli's files were incomplete. General John Adelio Maletti, head of the CID from 1971 to 1975, was convicted in absentia in 1990 for obstruction of justice in the Mariano Rumor case. 1974 Piazza della Loggia bombing in May 1974, a bomb exploded during an anti fascist demonstration in Brescia, killing eight and wounding 102. On 16 November 2010, the court of Brescia acquitted the defendants, Francesco Delfino, a carabinieri, Carlo Maria Maggi, Pino Rauti, Maurizio Tramonti and Delfo Zorzi, members of the Orden Nuovo neo-fascist group. The prosecutor had requested life sentences for Delfino, Maggi, Tramonti and Zorzi, and acquittal for lack of evidence for Pino Rauti. The four defendants were acquitted again by the appeal court in 2012 but, in 2014, the Supreme Court ruled that the appeal trial would have to be held again at the appeal court of Milan for Maggi and Tramonti. Delfino and Zorzi were definitively acquitted. On July 22, 2015, the appeal court sentenced Maggi and Tramonti to life imprisonment for ordering and co-ordinating the massacre. First Murder of the Red Brigades on 17 June 1974, two members of MSI were murdered in Padua. Initially, an internal feud between neo-fascist groups was suspected, since the crime had occurred in the city of Franco Frida. However, the murder was then claimed by the Red Brigades, it was the first murder of the organization, which, until then had only committed robberies, bombings and kidnappings. Planned neo-fascist coup Count Edgardo Sogno said in his memoirs that in July 1974, he visited the Central Intelligence Agency CIA, station chief in Rome to inform him of preparations for a neo-fascist coup. Asking what the United States US government would do in case of such a coup, Sogno wrote that he was told, The United States would have supported any initiative tending to keep the communists out of government. General Maletti declared, in 2001, that he had not known about Sogno's relationship with the CIA and had not been informed about the coup, known as Golpe Bianco, White Coup, led by Randolfo Pachardi. Bombing of Italicus Train On 4 August 12 died and 105 were injured in the bombing of the Italicus Roma Brinero Express at San Benedetto Val di Sambro. Arrest of Vito Michelli General Vito Michelli, chief of the SIOS Military Intelligence Agency in 1969, and head of the CID from 1970 to 1974, was arrested in 1974 on charges of conspiracy against the state. 
Following his arrest, the Italian secret services were reorganized by a 24 October 1977 law in an attempt to reassert civilian control over the intelligence agencies. The SID was divided into the current SISMI, the SISDE, and the CESIS, which was to directly coordinate with the Prime Minister of Italy. An Italian Parliamentary Committee on Secret Services Control Copico, was created at the same time. Michelli was acquitted in 1978. Arrest of Red Brigade's leaders In 1974, some leaders of the Red Brigades, including Renato Curcio and Alberto Franceschini, were arrested, but new leadership continued the war against the Italian right wing establishment with increased fervor. There were technical conditions for ending terrorism, however, the political class was unwilling, the Italian left wing was less worried by the existence of an armed organization than by the possible abuses by the police against protesters. It did therefore ask for the disarmament of police during street demonstrations. Also in the ruling Christian democracy, many underestimated the threat of the Red Brigades, speaking of phantom Red Brigades, emphasizing instead that of neo-fascist groups. The year before, Pater Opereo had disbanded, although Autonomia Operea carried on in its wake. Lotta Continua also dissolved in 1976, although their magazine struggled on for several years. From the remnants of Lotta Continua and similar groups, the terror organization Prima Linea emerged. 1975 On 28 February, student and right activist Mikis Mantakas was killed by far leftists during riots. On 13 March, young militant of Italian social movement MSI, Sergio Rimelli was assaulted in Milan by a group of Avangardia Operea and wounded in the head with wrenches, aka Hazit 36. He died on 29 April, after 47 days in the hospital. On 25 May, student and left activist Alberto Brasili was stabbed in Milan by neo fascist militants. On 5 June, Giovanni D'Alfonso, member of the Carabinieri police force, was killed by the Red Brigades. 1976 on 29 April, lawyer and militant of Italian Social Movement MSI, Enrico Pedinovi was killed in Milan by the organization Prima Linea. This was the first assassination conducted by Prima Linea. On 8 July, in Rome, Judge Vittorio Accorsio was killed by neo fascist Pierluigi Concutelli. On 14 December, in Rome, policeman Prisco Palumbo was killed by the nuclei armati proletari. On 15 December, in Sesto San Giovanni, a town near Milan, Vice Chief Vittorio Padovani and Marshal Sergio Bazega were killed by young extremist Walter Alasia. 1977 on 12 March, a Turin policeman Giuseppe Ciotta was killed by Prima Linea. On of March, a Rome policeman Claudio Graziosi was killed by nuclei armati proletari. On 28 April, in Turin, lawyer Fulvio Croce was killed by the Red Brigades. On 14 May, in Milan, activists from a far-left organization pulled out their pistols and began to shoot at the police, killing policeman Antonio Custra. A photographer took a photo of an activist shooting at the police. This year was called the time of the P-38, referring to the Walther P-38 pistol. On 16 November, in Turin, Carlo Casalegno, deputy director of the newspaper La Stampa, was seriously wounded in an ambush of the Red Brigades. He died 13 days later, on November 29. 1978 on 4 January, in Casino, Fiat Boss Security Services Carmen de Rosa was killed by leftists. On 7 January, in Rome Young Militants of Italian Social Movement MSI, Franco Bigonzetti and Francesco Civata were killed by far leftists. Another militant, Stefano Recchioni, was killed by the police during a violent demonstration. Some militants left the MSI and founded the Nuclei Armati Revolutionary, which had ties with the Roman criminal organization Banda della Magliana. On 20 January, in Florence, policeman Fausto Dionisi was killed by Prima Linea. On 7 February, in Prato, a town near Florence, notary Gianfranco Spighi was killed by leftists. On 14 February, in Rome, Judge Ricardo Palma was killed by the Red Brigades. On 10 March, in Turin, Marshal Rosario Berardi was killed by the Red Brigades. 
Brigades. On the 11th of April, in Turin, policeman Lorenzo Cotugno was killed by the Red Brigades. On the 20th of April, in Milan, policeman Francesco de Cataldo was killed by the Red Brigades. On the 10th of October, in Rome, Judge Girolamo Tartaglione was killed by the Red Brigades. On the 11th of October, in Naples, university teacher Alfredo Paolella was killed by Prima Linea. On the 8th of November, in Patrica, a town near Frosinone, Judge Fidele Calvosa was killed by the Unita Comuniste Combatenti. Kidnapping and assassination of Aldo Moro on March 16, 1978, Aldo Moro was kidnapped by the Red Brigades, then led by Mario Moretti, and five of his security detail were killed. Aldo Moro was a left-leaning Christian Democrat who served several times as Prime Minister. Before his murder, he had been trying to include the Italian Communist Party, PCI, headed by Enrico Berlinguer, in the government through a deal called the Historic Compromise. PCI was, at the time, the largest communist party in Western Europe, was mainly because of its non-extremist and pragmatic stance, its growing independence from Moscow and its Eurocommunist doctrine. The PCI was especially strong in areas such as Emilia-Romagna, where it had stable government positions and mature practical experience, which may have contributed to a more pragmatic approach to politics. The Red Brigades were fiercely opposed by the Communist Party and trade unions, a few left-wing politicians even used the condescending expression, Comrades who do wrong. Company Che Sabagliano. Franco Bonasoli, one of RB's members who participated at the kidnapping, declared that the decision to kidnap Moro was taken a week before, a day was decided, it could have been March 15 or 17. On May 9, 1978, after a summary trial of the people. Moro was murdered by Mario Moretti with, it was also determined, the participation of Germano Macari. The corpse was found that same day in the trunk of a red Renault 4 in Via Michelangelo Catani, in downtown Rome. A consequence there was the fact that the PCI did not gain executive power. Moro's assassination was followed by a large clampdown on the social movement, including the arrest of many members of Autonomia Operaea, including, Oreste Scalzone and political philosopher Antonio Negri, arrested on 7 April 1979. 1979 Active armed organization grew from 2 in 1969 to 91 in 1977 and 269 in 1979. In that year there were 659 attacks. The year with the most assassinations. On 19 January, Turin policeman Giuseppe Larusso was killed by the Prima Linea organization. On 24 January, worker and trade unionist Guido Rosa was killed in Genoa by the Red Brigades. On 29 January, Judge Emilio Alessandrini was killed in Milan by Prima Linea. On 9 March, university student Emanuele Urelli was killed in Turin by Prima Linea. On 20 March, investigative journalist Mino Pecorelli was gunned down in his car in Rome. Prime Minister Giulio Andriotti and Mafia boss Gaetano Badalamenti were sentenced in 2002 to 24 years in prison for the murder, though the sentences were overturned the following year. On 3 May, in Rome, policemen Antonio Maya and Piero Alanu were killed by the Red Brigades. On 13 July, in Druento, a town near Turin, policeman Bartolomeo Mana was killed by Prima Linea. On 13 July, in Rome, Lieutenant Colonel of Carabinieri Antonio Varisco was killed by the Red Brigades. On the 18 July, Barman Carmen Civitate was killed in Turin, by Prima Linea. On 21 September, Carlo Giuliano was killed in Turin by a group of Prima Linea. On the 11th of December, five teachers and five students of the Belletta Institute in Turin were shot in the legs by Prima Linea. 1980 More assassinations on 8 January, Milan policemen Antonio Cestari, Rocco Santoro and Michel Tatuli were killed by the Red Brigades. On 25 January, Genoa policemen Emanuele Tutobene and Antonio Cazu were killed by the Red Brigades. On 29 January, manager of Porto Marghera. S. Petrochemical Silvio Gori was killed by the Red Brigades. On 5 February, in Monza, Paolo Pauletti was killed by Prima Linea. On 7 February, Prima Linea. S. Militant William Vacker was killed on suspicion of treason, on 12 February, in Rome, at the La Sapienza 
University, Vittorio Bachelet, Vice President of the Superior Council of Magistrates and former President of the Roman Catholic Association Azioni Cattolica, was killed by the Red Brigades, on 10 March, in Rome. Cook Luigi Allegretti was killed by Compagni Armati per il Comunismo, on 16 March, in Salerno. Judge Nicola Giacumbi was killed by the Red Brigades, on 18 March, in Rome. Judge Girolamo Minervini was killed by the Red Brigades. On 19 March, in Milan, Judge Guido Galli was killed by a group of Prima Linea. On 10 April, in Turin, Giuseppe Pichoneri a Mondial Palgard, was killed by Ronde Proletari. On 28 May, in Milan, journalist Walter Tobagi was killed by Brigada 28 Marzo. On 23 June, in Rome, Judge Mario Amato was killed by the Nuclei Armati Revolutionari. On 31 December, in Rome, General of Carabinieri Enrico Galvaligi was killed by the Red Brigades. The Bologna Massacre On 2 August, a bomb killed 85 people and wounded more than 200 in Bologna. Known as the Bologna Massacre, the blast destroyed a large portion of the city's railway station. This was found to be a neo-fascist bombing, mainly organized by the Nuclei Armati Revolutionari. Francesca Mambro and Valerio Fioravanti were sentenced to life imprisonment. In April 2007 the Supreme Court confirmed the conviction of Luigi Ciavardini, a NAR member associated closely with close ties to Terza Posizione. Ciavardini received a 30-year prison sentence for his role in the attack. 1981 On 5 July, Giuseppe Talircio, director of the Porto Marghera, S. Montedison Petrochemical Establishment, was killed by the Red Brigades after 47 days of kidnapping. On 3 August, Roberto Peci, worker electrician, was killed by the Red Brigades after 54 days of kidnapping. It S.A. Vendetta against his brother Patrizio, member of RB, became Pentito the year before. On 17 December, James L. Dozier, an American general and the deputy commander of NATO's South European forces based in Verona, was kidnapped by Red Brigades. He was freed in Padua on 28 January 1982 by the Nucleo Operativo Central di Sicurezza, NOCS, an Italian police anti terrorist task force. 1982 On 26 August, a group of Red Brigade's terrorists attacked a military troop convoy, in Salerno. In the attack, Corporal Antonio Palumbo and policeman Antonio Bandiera and Mario De Marco were killed. The terrorists escaped. On 21 October, a group of Red Brigade's terrorists attacked a bank in Turin, killing two guards, Antonio Pedio and Sebastiano D'Aleo. 1984 On 15 February, Lehman Hunt, American diplomat and Director General of the International Peacekeeping Force, Multinational Force and Observers MFO, was killed by the Red Brigades. On 23 December, a bomb in a train between Florence and Rome killed 17 and wounded more than 200. In 1992, Mafia S. members Giuseppe Calo and Guido Circola were sentenced to life imprisonment. Franco D. Agostino, another member of the Sicilian Mafia, got 24 years, and German engineer Friedrich Schoden 22 for the bombing. Camorra's member Giuseppe Misso was sentenced to three years. Other members of Camorra, Alfonso Galliata and Giulio Parazzi, were sentenced to 18 months, and their role in the massacre was deemed marginal. On February 18, 1994, the Florence Court absolved MSI Member of Parliament Massimo Abitongello from the massacre charge, but ruled him guilty of giving the explosive to Misso in the spring of 1984. Abitongello was sentenced to six years. Victims' relatives asked for a tougher sentence, but lost the appeal and had to pay for judiciary expenses. 1985 on 9 January, in Torvajanica, a town near Rome, policeman Ottavio Conte was killed by the Red Brigades. On 27 March, in Rome, economist Ezio Tarantelli was killed by the Red Brigades. 1986 On 10 February 1986, Lando Conti, former mayor of Florence, was killed by the Red Brigades. 1987 
On 20 March 1987, Licio Giorgieri, a general in the Italian Air Force, was assassinated by the Red Brigades in Rome. 1988 On 16 April 1988, Senator Roberto Ruffili was assassinated in an attack by a group of the Red Brigades in Forlì. It was the last murder committed by the Red Brigades. On 23 October a group of irreducibles declared, in a document, that war against the state was over. Continued violence in the late 1990s, early 2000s decade, a resurgence of Red Brigade's terrorism led to further assassinations. On 20 May 1999, Massimo D'Antona, consultant to the Ministry of Labor, was assassinated in an attack by a group of terrorists of the Red Brigades in Rome. On 19 March 2002, Marco Biaggi, consultant to the Ministry of Labor, was assassinated in an attack by a group of terrorists of the Red Brigades in Bologna. On 2 March 2003, Emanuele Petri, a policeman, was assassinated by a group of Red Brigades terrorists near Castiglian Fiorentino. In 2005, some suspected terrorists, known as the New Red Brigades Brigade Ross, were arrested. On June 13, the Court of Milan condemned 14 terrorists. The leader was sentenced to 15 years in jail. Three suspected terrorists were found not guilty. Asylum France the Mitterrand Doctrine, which was established in 1985 by then French President François Mitterrand, stated that Italian far left terrorists who fled to France and who were convicted of violent acts in Italy, excluding active, actual, bloody terrorism during the years of lead, would receive asylum and would not be subject to extradition to Italy. They would be integrated into French society. The act was announced on 21 April 1985, at the 65th Congress of the Human Rights League, Ligue des Droits de l'Homme, LDH, stating that Italian criminals who had given up their violent pasts and had fled to France would be protected from extradition to Italy. Italian refugees who took part in terrorist action before 1981 have broken links with the infernal machine in which they participated, have begun a second phase of their lives, have integrated into French society. I told the Italian government that they were safe from any sanction by the means of extradition. Brazil Some Italian citizens accused of terrorist acts have found refuge in Brazil such as Cesare Battisti and others former members of the Armed Proletarians for Communism, a far-left militant and terrorist organization. Nicaragua Some Italian far-left activists found political asylum in Nicaragua, including Alessio Casimiri, who took part in the kidnapping of Aldo Moro. Terrorist organizations in Italy, incomplete list. Red Brigades Prima Linea Gruppo 22 Ottober Orden Nuovo National Vanguard, Italy Nuclei Armati Revolutionari See also Definitions of terrorism History of the Italian Republic Movement of 1977 La Not della Repubblica TV program Political violence in Turkey, 1976–80 Notes References Bibliography Galli, Giorgio, 1986. Storia del Partito Armato. Milan, Lombardi, Italy, Rizzoli Editore. Montanelli, Indro, Mario Servi, 1989. L'Italia dei Du Giovanni. Milan, Lombardi, Italy, Rizzoli Editore. Montanelli, Indro, Mario Servi, 1991. 
L'Italia degli anni di Piombo. Milan, Lombardi, Italy, Rizzoli Editore. Zavalli, Sergio, 1992. Lanat della Repubblica. Rome, Lazio, Italy, Nuova Eri. Montanelli, Indro, Mario Servi, 1993. L'Italia degli anni di Fango. Milan, Lombardi, Italy, Rizzoli Editore. Cento Bull, Anna, Adalgisa Giorgio, 2006. Speaking Out and Silencing, Culture, Society and Politics in Italy in the 1970s. Fasanella, Giovanni, Giovanni Pellegrino. La Guerra Seville. Per la time del terrorismo nell'Italia Repubblicana, Istituto Poligrafico e Zecca dello Stato Libraria dello Stato, Istituto Poligrafico e Zecca dello Stato S.P.A. The Office of Republic President. External links Chronology of the Years of Lead, in Italian Italy's Invisible Government, Rosella Dossi, CERC, Contemporary Europe Research Centre, University of Melbourne